Welcome back to another episode of Capes and Tights, a comic book and pop culture podcast. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. Adam is off right de- today, uh, central in conflict, but he will be back in the near future. For right now, it's me hosting this week's episode with Ian Rosenberg and Mike Cavallaro of the Free Speech Handbook, which comes out on Amazon and at your local independent bookstore on November 30th. It's a graphic novel on the topic of free speech and your rights and so on and so on. So let me get into it here a little bit in a second. Ian Rosenberg is a media lawyer at ABC. He also teaches media law at Brooklyn College and is the author of The Fight for Free Speech on the NYU Press. It came out in 2021. Mike Cavallaro is an artist. He's an Eisner Award nominated comic book and he's also an artist and also an animation artist as well. They partnered up uh, with World Civics Comics for second books to release this graphic novel and a series of other graphic novels other authors and artists have uh, participated in uh, for this uh, World Civics, Civic, World Citizen Comics. Can't say this right. World Citizen Comics series at first second books. The hardcover, again, like I said, is available November 30th uh, on Macmillan. Uh, grab a copy at Amazon.com or your local shop. You can also find them at freespeechhandbook.com and on Instagram and Twitter at Free Speech Book about the Free Speech Handbook. It's drawing parallel on parallels of 10 seminal Supreme Court cases and current events. Free Speech Handbook creates a practical framework framework for understanding our free speech protections. Um, I chatted with them uh, for a good little bit here. I talked about the book, how they got it started, what the book's about, and so on. I will tell you, you'll listen and hear on the podcast. I really enjoyed the book due to the fact that I am not the greatest reader in the world. And I love the fact that a graphic novel can teach me something uh, serious about this world, something that's actually current events as well as having the art from Mike on there to help me read and understand the book a lot better than if I was just an actual textbook itself. So I really appreciated it, Mike and Ian coming on to talk the book again, November 30th on Amazon or your local co- or your local bookstore, check out the free speech handbook by Mike and Ian. Enjoy this episode with Mike and Ian. Thanks guys. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the podcast. Good. Good. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So we're going to dive right in here uh, and talk uh, the free uh, free speech handbook uh, today. Um, that way you guys have you guys on. We've been talking about doing this for a little while now, and it's coming up. And it, it's kind of cool because I, I like how close it is to the actual release date, too. So we get you know people excited about it coming out on November 30th. Uh, but right. I actually just, yeah, there, there you go. Look at that. Hey, how did there you already go. have a copy? No, November 30th. <laughs> An advanced copy. <laughs> See, that's proof that it actually is coming out, right? You know, there's no it have it right there. It's physically printed now. Uh, but how did this come about? Like, how did it start? Uh, well, I can I can jump in there. Uh, so uh, I've been wanting to do um, a, a guide to free speech for a while. And uh, really, the origin story of it is that I've been talking with my kids at the dinner table. Uh, about uh, National School Walkout um, when that was happening around 2018. And at the time they were um, 12 and 10 and they really wanted to know what their free speech rights were. What would happen? Would they get in trouble? And and what would that mean? And did they have the right to protest at school? And I've been a media lawyer for over 20 years now. And in talking with them, I realized that you could talk about free speech law in a way that answers contemporary questions, looks at the past, and could be simplified without dumbing it down. And so uh, I was lucky enough um, to be hearing about uh, World Citizens Comics, which is the new civics line of graphic novels from First Second. Uh, And uh, when I pitched them, when my agent pitched them, uh, I was lucky enough to be uh, put in uh, partnership with Mike. And uh, that's 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 my uh, beginning uh, of this whole process. Were you involved in this before at the same time, Mike? Like, were you guys partnering up, or was it something that like, you guys knew each other before? Or? Uh, kind of what was happening on um, while Ian was doing all that. Um, <laughs> the official announcement for World Citizen Comics had happened. You know, there were a couple press releases. Mark Siegel. Uh, over for a second, had done some interviews. And uh, I spotted one of those on social media one morning. You know, I had friends who were already working on one or two of the earlier books. 
So I, I kind of knew about it, but when the news broke, I just sent Mark an email because, you know, we've been friends for a long time. We've done several books together and I just said, uh, you know, congrats. I'm proud of you. Uh, good luck with this new line. And, um, you know, if there's a way for me to participate, uh, I would love to. And the reason for that was, you know, at that time, I think the public discourse about um, current events and politics in this country, you know, uh, was getting very divided and very heated. And like on my social media, um, I could see my friends and families like they were all very um you know, they're very, very angry posts uh, all day, every day, right? And that was something I didn't want to engage in. It, it, it's exhausting. Um, you know, people end up arguing with each other. I don't want to argue with friends and family over stuff. Uh, it's not productive. It doesn't go anywhere, you know. However, I'm feeling a lot of the same things, you know, of course, that everyone else is feeling. I'm just looking for a constructive uh, way to sort of get it off my chest. Right. And, and, and at the time I was, I was thinking I, I'm an author, you know, like it should, if I can't use what I do to, uh, speak about these things in a, in a calm, uh, reasoned way, then why am I an author? Right. So when the news broke about world citizen, that's really what I was feeling like, this is what I was waiting for. It was, you know, it didn't have to speak to any particular thing. It just had to address the climate, the general climate. You know, that's what I was looking for, right? So, uh, I, you know, I was in the middle of another book. I, I wasn't searching for a gig. It wasn't trying. I wasn't trying to drum up work, you know. Uh, and I, I didn't expect Mark to write back immediately and say, like, <laughs> I just got this proposal yesterday, <laughs> you know, which was Ian's proposal, right? And he just sent it my way, and I checked it out, and. Um, it, you know, it, was, it wasn't anything that would have occurred to me. I wouldn't have said, like, I need to do a free, you know, First Amendment uh, story. You know, it wasn't, it, but uh, it felt right when I, when I read Ian's proposal. It was really engaging. And I felt like, yeah, this, this is what I want, to, uh, I want to get on board with. So, you know, we came at it with, I think, two different directions, but both feeling like, uh, we wanted to, you know, Ian wanted to address something specific and I wanted to address a more general thing and, and the timing just worked perfectly. I know how, like, obviously we talk a lot of comic books and, and such on this podcast. So we talk to different creators and so on. And we talked before we started recording one of these images behind me is from a friend of mine, Ben Bishop. He's been on and talked to different projects and things. Is this a collab, real true collaborative effort between the two of you guys? Like, is this something that you guys, like the pages, you know how some of them are like an our, our author writes the entire book and then the artist goes through and illustrates what they have or the opposite. Was this truly a collaborative effort? Well, it was, it was truly collaborative um, and a, an amazing experience for me. I had written the book, um, but I had written a much longer book. I had written um, a 200 page book without pictures and Mike transformed it into a 200 uh, page pic uh, book, you know, chock full of uh, images. Um, so, uh, so Mike really was invaluable, not only in all of the art, which he does so brilliantly, but really in turning this into a graphic novel. Um, and um, I, I think both his storytelling skills as an author were invaluable, but also just being, you know, the goal of this book is for teens and adults to learn about free speech, even if they've never heard a free speech case or issue discussed before. And so um, Mike was, I think, really great in being able to um, further distill the message I was trying to convey to people who aren't lawyers or people who haven't encountered this kind of discussion before. The uh, yeah, it was, thing is, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to say for me, you know, it was, it was kind of an adaptation and uh, of, of Ian's uh, manuscript. And um, for me, the only hurdle was that first time, I, you know, maybe I, I did the first chapter and then I ran it past Ian. And that was sort of the make or break moment. Like, uh, you know, I, a lot of compressing had to happen in order to make the first chapter fit into the first chapter. And, you know, it could have gone uh, two ways. You know, Ian could have freaked out because, uh, you know, this, this sort of condensing thing had, had happened, but his response was 
just very like, you know, gracious and it, it, it was the perfect response because what you, what you want in this is like, you know, the writer has written something and then the artist kind of draws something and the writer kicks back and says, well, okay, if that, then maybe we can change this to this. Right. And now you're, now it's a, it's a joint venture. Right. And so as soon as that happened, I knew we were, we were going to be okay yeah. for the next 200 pages. And so it worked very well. I, like I how think you said my response step was back I and forth. It. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I love it. And then maybe <laughs> further down in the email, and and here's like you know five or six things. Can you maybe slightly change? But um, but uh, but it was you know I, I was knocked out by Mike's approach um uh, from the from the get go. It's funny because my my day job is a graphic designer for a brewery, and the, one of the things the reason why I realize it goes so well together is because I do the same thing. Where I'll you know as a designer create something and then pitch it to the ownership and they'll go, can you change this, that, and the other thing? And the, why the relationship works so well is I, I trust their instincts too. So I'm able to come back and be like, okay, they're not just crapping all over my design. They just, they want it the way they want it as well. And we can work well together. So it does seem like that needs to happen in something like this. You can't just have one person stubborn with the other person not uh, because you have to work so closely together that, you know, one is doing something that the other one's not doing. So. Uh, yeah, it's the no. same. I appreciate the book mainly because when I was younger, uh, 13, 14 years old, I really struggled with reading uh, and comic books is what made me really discuss and, 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 and try to further my reading ability uh, as well as being able to actually captivate my, my creativity side in my imagination uh, and, and books. My, my wife is the opposite. My wife can read an entire book in one night and get, you know, and get, get everything that's going on in there. I am still to the point where like comic books are my main uh, source of reading because of the fact that it's, it's confined a little bit more difficult to read a 200 page book. That's just text. And so I, when I saw the book for the first time, when you guys, we, we, we were back and forth con communicating versus via email, it really struck me because I would like to learn new things about like the first amendment or free speech or so on. And this struck a chord with me because I can actually do this. I likely would read one of your other books, Ian, and probably get a few pages in and nothing against your writing. I would probably just lose interest because it's so much more difficult for me to get. This book, I, I front to back, it's on my Kindle I, or my iPad. I can read the whole thing, the digital, the advanced copy that I got because of the fact that I'm actually interested in looking at the pictures Mike's drawing, plus reading the speech and so on. So I do think this is going to be a good thing for people to learn things in a new different way. Uh, well, that's great to hear. And that, that is totally uh, by design and, and another uh, tribute uh, to Mike. But, you know, I, I think this is a book for teens and adults um, because both, uh, you know, at my kids, um, you know, are, you know, uh, are avid graphic novel readers. And um, although they will read my book, they're, they're not necessarily going to read other people's books uh, about free speech. So uh, I, I think that for kids who are looking, who, you know, who want to speak their mind and care about social issues, I think this is perfect for them. But, you know, also, um, I love graphic novels as an adult, too. I, I am a, a big reader and obviously read a lot about the law. But, you know, um, the John Lewis March trilogy uh, is incredible. And I learned an amazing amount about John Lewis um, from that graphic novel series. And I'm excited for um, the new uh, edition that's coming out. Um, and, you know, I, I could have gone and bought a John Lewis biography, you know, that's a text biography, but I was, you know, psyched um, to be reading uh, this. And I, I think um, in graphic novel form as an adult, even as somebody who's a reader, and I, I think the whole trend toward um, nonfiction graphic novels is really awesome um, in that it just further opens up whole areas of, you know, sort of knowledge to people in a way that hopefully they can engage in. And, and I think that the drawings are going to make people, uh, you know, really sucked in from, uh, from the very beginning. I think it allows us to digest a little bit more too, as someone, yeah. uh, you know, when you watch a movie, for example, or something like that, when I look at a comic book or a graphic novel, I digest the entire page a little bit differently than if you're just reading point A to point B. Uh, and, and the first one I really, I mean, I'm big, again, we're big comic book fans here at this podcast and the Stan Lee, uh, biography they did, it was a, a I forget the exact title of it, but it was a, it was a graphic novel. It was a comic book basic 
comic book of his life. And it was like, I actually felt like I was living the, the, uh, the, the, the whole comic book as well as reading and learning about someone and so on. The same thing is I wasn't at the women's March, uh, you know, after the Trump's election and, and, and so on. So, but, but looking at the pictures and reading it, I felt like I could actually be part of the, the actual uh, event. The other big thing is that I laugh because how far funny books have come to the point we have such a serious topic that we can actually enjoy that there's actual art in it as well as something that's pretty serious instead of just a, a comedy book. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll let Mike knows a lot more about the history of comics than I, so I'll, I'll let him uh, jump in there. Well, I, you know, listening to you guys talk, I'm, I'm trying to piece together, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure how to express it, but I, I feel like... Um, one of the cool things about uh, approaching a topic like this uh, in comics format is, um, you know, like like I, Justin kind of hinted that you, you are digesting it in a different way because it's presenting it in a different way. Like, um, yes, there there are plenty of sequences where uh, I'm I'm making an effort to depict what Ian uh, is talking about in in the script, you know. Uh, in terms of like time, place, person, you know, like uh, with some cartoony historical a uh, accuracy. But um, then there's, I think it's balanced by these other sections where, um, uh, you know, the artwork is really, it's like a second line narrative, you know, there's what Ian's talking about, but then the artwork is, is, fre is frequently doing something quite different. And it's doing, it's doing something that's uh, supportive of, of what Ian's talking about, but it's it's trying to, to convey uh, concepts and ideas, in, in, you know, in a way. And so, in that in that way, it becomes kind of um, you know a visual handwriting. You know, that's it. It's not simply illustrative. You know, it it, it, it is it is part of the uh, narration, and and I think that it communicates in in a very sophisticated way. Not not this book. Uh, only I'm, I'm saying, you know, just that that a comics, the comics format, right? The the, the mechanisms of comics can kind of, uh, you know, communicate more than just, uh, you know, where this person's talking, so we're seeing them, or this is the place, so we're seeing it. We can we can we can, um, you know, we can speak on on a number of levels using that that format. So, you know, at, you're, you're you know, Justin, you're a comics fan, and um, I think most comics fans uh, understand that uh, it's it's a medium that has traditionally uh, been uh, sold short of what it's actually capable of. You know, we we have these uh, you know high water marks in in comics that you know blown all our minds about you know what what the format and the mechanics can do. And I think one of the reasons there is such a boom in uh, graphic novel and book book market publishing of graphic novels is we're watching the general public discover what we what we knew, you know, what we knew since we were, you know, kids, right? Uh, that this was that there's many levels on which this thing delivers information, right? And and it makes it ideal for something like this. Uh, yeah, and I want to just you know praise Mike a little bit more in that since uh, he won't uh, toot his own horn. Um, not only Justin does it does this book, you know, sort of illustrate the the places that you might not have gone. You might not have gone to the Women's March or we can't know what um, Mary Beth Tinker, you know, looked like as she left her home to wear a black armband to protest um, the Vietnam War on the way to middle school in the, in the 60s. Um, so there's the amazing sort of documentary aspect that Mike's covers, but then there is this deeper level of sort of, you know, bringing to life metaphors like you know the most famous metaphor in in free speech law is the marketplace of ideas and um you know i know uh this is a podcast but also video mike does an amazing uh job of actually you know creating a marketplace um and um and i think you know that having that visual when you're reading about the idea that we're supposed to have this sort of no holds barred no government interference way of getting at truth I think that visual not only explains it, but it, it enriches it in a way that um, I, I think you you wouldn't get um, just reading it, you know, in text. 
it, it, it makes me, I don't know, digest it way more. Like it, I get, I get to actually stop and think cause you have to look around the pictures a little, like you have to look around a little bit more than just, I don't know. And maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't a very good student either. So I'm wondering if like there were some sort of graphic novel style history books that just, that's how they taught some classes where you got to read these like picture books to get through some of these things that I might actually have been a better student. Uh, and so this, like I said, this whole thing, if, if you guys were to approach us and we were to talk back and forth, like, let's get on the podcast and you were just selling uh, your book, a, a physical, just, uh, you know, textbook. Yeah. I don't even know if I'd be interested because of the fact that I, I, again, I'm not, I love books. I, I now have been more, uh, reading books as an adult, but this, this idea of learning something through, uh, the mixture of art and text is just, it's huge to me. And I think that you guys have something really good here. Uh, and I can't wait to see other people, but I can't wait for other people to actually read it and actually look at it. Like we're talking about it. Like, like I'm talking about it, like it's already out there, but it isn't yeah. yet. And I can't wait for people to actually go to the stores or, I don't know if many people go to the actual stores anymore, but <laughs> buy it online and, and get the actual chance, chance to actually read this too. And, and it's going to be available in Kindle too, right? As I saw on Amazon, or is that am I wrong? Uh, about that? I'm actually not sure um, about about, but um, but it is available on Amazon and, and good indie bookstores uh, everywhere. Yep. Pre-order now, coming out November 30th. But you know, Mike, um, to your point about like teaching um, and, and you know this in schools, um, Mike and I were on a panel at Comic Con with uh, hosted by a, a teacher, a history teacher, and um, we do think uh, that this is uh, not only sort of an increasingly used tool by teachers today, um, particularly for middle school and high school, but um, but that's amazing, and I, I think this the free speech handbook would be perfect for a history class, a civics class, a government class uh, to really, you know, uh, get uh, teens um, both into and sort of over the hurdle of like, uh, that sounds like, um, you know, sort of dry uh, and realize that both in the, the way it's presented and in the subject matter that we're talking about national school walkout or Colin Kaepernick taking a knee or, you know, what can you say or not say on social media, that these are really contemporary modern questions that we're answering um, by looking at the past, but not, not just dwelling there. It's also, it's, it has been difficult as you're promoting this book, obviously you guys have been doing this on different shows and different podcasts and, and interviews. Uh, has it has been difficult when we first got the discussion about it, when I first heard about the book, you immediately kind of cringe a little bit with the words free speech because there is this, there can be this bad connotation to it that, that it's more like I can say whatever the hell I want to say kind of thing and not what this book actually means. Has it been difficult to try to promote and try to get people past that, that, that this is a learning thing, not a, uh, I would hate to say bad thing, but like there's this weird connotation to, or connection to free the words free speech. Uh, well, you know, I think everyone has sort of an opinion on free speech and everyone sort of uh, is clamoring about their free speech rights on sort of all sides or, or all places on the political spectrum, but they really don't know what those rights mean. And, mm -hmm. and, and until now, there's been very few resources um, to sort of explain that. So I, I hope um, that all of the sort of different gut feelings that people have when they hear free speech, um, you know, intrigue them to, to learn enough uh, or to dive in to sort of experience. I don't want to make it feel like it's always just learning it, you know, to really experience yes. it um, for fun and for their own, uh, their own knowledge. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll also say that one of the themes of the book um, is that freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. Mm -hmm. So just because you have a right to say something, uh, and just because the government may be barred from interfering with your right to say something, does not mean that you get sort of a free pass uh, to say whatever you want. Um, and I think that is an idea when I've been doing talks about the book, you know, that is an idea that comes up uh, that is a question that comes up uh, a lot. And, and I think this book um, sort of, you know, explains that, um, why that's true, why that's been true, even for people who win uh, their right to free speech at, at the Supreme Court have also still suffered consequences and why that's true for people today who are engaging with these kind of rights. That's awesome. I, I, like I said, like I said, I can't, I can't stress how much I've liked it. I, I do think that uh, getting and reading it ahead of time has I guess it opened, I think it's not ju don't judge a book by its cover kind of thing. Cause uh, we did a couple of weeks ago, we talked to Eliza Clark, who was the showrunner of uh, why the last man, which is on Hulu. And yeah. she had talked about how she's like, and free speech about how bombarded she has been with, with uh, uh, the woke tendencies of the world and all these other things because of a, a show that's 
basically about uh, the Y chromosomes going away and it's being just about women and all this other stuff and transgender and all that, uh, you know, those topics. And so it's funny because she says the, the, the people who have been commenting back to her about all these negative things are likely the people who have never even seen the show or read the comic book. And the idea that these just people just want to spout off about something. So I'm sure there always will be these connections to the words of free speech and be able to say what they want and no consequences and all that stuff. But then people won't actually read and, 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 and digest the actual information that's in something like this book uh, before they actually speak their mind. So, you know, reading the actual book and, and I say reading, but also visualizing the book is a huge thing for people to actually understand what this book's all about so i hope people actually buy it or i know people will buy it but go out there and buy it my point so, so do we <laughs> yeah uh, and, and, i mean and I hope you know, people so go ahead ian oh i was gonna say and, and you know and even further i hope people realize that like free speech is a lot more than just like the right to like diss somebody on social media um you know that really we are talking about you know, the right to protest, we're talking about um, the right to even advocate for illegal action, we're mm -hmm. talking about the right to curse, um, you know, we are talking about, you know, really fundamental rights that are necessary for our democracy to continue to thrive. So um, I think this hopefully not only sort of defines what the limits are of free speech, but also opens up people's minds to the sort of very serious and, and vital elements of free speech that are, are perhaps less focused on than the, the sort of negative aspects that, that you were referring to, Justin, that often come to mind for people. Yeah, I, you know, I wanted to just jump in on that that previous note and just say, you know, I'm lucky uh, on a lot of the projects. Anytime I collaborate, I, I always say I, I got to be the first fan of the book, you know, because there's that moment where the, the manuscript arrives and I usually I sit down, I read the whole thing mm -hmm. and just to kind of get the wheels uh, uh, turning. And, um, you know, I, I got Ian's script. I read it in a weekend and and um, I I'm. You know, I am a um, fairly, you know, politically minded person. Like I, I pay attention to politics. I, I, I read, I've always read a lot since I was a kid. Uh, I, I read a lot of nonfiction. I, I like history a lot. Um, and I learned a ton. <laughs> there was so much in here that I had no idea about. I, I, I never learned it in school. It didn't come up in anything I had read previously. Uh, it was it was really engaging. Uh, you know, I think I wrote Ian on Monday morning and just, and said something along the lines of like, you know, I, I was, I was excited. I was angry. I was sad. I, you know, I, I was elated, you know, I, it just ran me through all these uh, things where, you know, there's, you know, there's the turn of events where things don't, don't seem just, there's the there's the stories where it seems like the right side has won, you know, depending on your perspective. Um, so, I, so I just went through a whole bunch of emotions and in, in, uh, in reading it and and really gained a lot of information. And so, I mean, uh, I, I just hope that that uh, is what, the, you know, pe that people do pick it up and read it. I think they're going to have uh, the same experience. Um, we might not get angry and happy about the same parts, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that it will run you through uh, those, you know, it'll run you through the gamut of uh, emotions and, and um, you are going to learn a lot. If, you, if you're a regular guy, person on the street, you're going to learn a lot from reading this book. You will. It, it does seem also like with ever changing culture we have right now does it seem like this book also could have had a revision like that is that it was there had to be a stop even though we're moving forward in the future that new cases and new things are going to have to be either be added or that even from the time I and mean, you guys have obviously been working on this for a little while now between the time that you guys started working on this to now i'm sure there's things you've wanted to put in the book that are actually missing or or you know things you'll know will happen in the future is that true <laughs> Well, um, we were somewhat lucky with some timing, like, um, you know, we were putting the, the final touches on it when, uh, when the tragic death of, of George Floyd and the sort of resulting Black Lives Matter uh, resurgence uh, came about. And so we did 
uh, we're able to add in references to that in our chapter on Colin Kaepernick because mm -hmm. people's attitudes toward uh, generally white people's attitudes toward Colin Kaepernick had you know transformed um, uh, the book advocates um, you know for his type of, of, uh, of protest as being fundamental to our notions of free speech, but that but that is not always the typical response. So so on some very contemporary things. Um, we were able to get it in, but but the book is, and yes, you're right. I mean, the, the great thing is there's a free speech controversy every day. And uh, and I hope that each one of those controversies will, will encourage somebody to, to pick up the book um, and, and to dive in, even though not every uh, one of the most, you know, uh, cutting edge ones is ever gonna uh, keep being in the book. But I would say, but I, that doesn't actually um, make me sad or go, ooh, I wish I could still get, you know, one more one more chapter in there. Um, I really think that the that the reason I begin each chapter with a contemporary question, um, like you know, does the media lie, or you know, what is Colin Kaepernick's right to take a knee, and then answer that question with a story from the past, that provides answers to those questions. But it's also supposed to show people that they can um, get answers <laughs> by you know, sort of thinking like, well, how did I, how, you know, there's a question here right now, what, what stories in this book might answer um, this question we had? So um, right um, this June, uh, we've had one of the most important student speech uh, cases to come out from the Supreme Court. Um, this is not in the book, but um, uh, it's known as the sort of the, the cursing cheerleader case. This a young woman, Brandy Levy, got kicked off her uh, or didn't make the um, cheerleading team. And then she cursed out her team on Snapchat and um, was kicked off the team. And she sued um, regarding um, her free speech rights. And, and the Supreme Court just granted her a victory this past June. This is not in the book, but the key case to understand about her student speech rights is in the book. And that's um, Tinker versus Des Moines, Mary Beth Tinker, this you know, 13 year old uh, young woman who wears uh, a black armband um, in her Iowa school to protest the Vietnam War. Um, so I think that um, there will always be new triggers uh, and new free speech questions, but I, I hope that for a long time, uh, this book will be giving people key answers, uh, even if uh, we're not specifying uh, the, the, the latest question. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And, and you know, it, it's, first of all, we're, 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 you're living, you did a nonfiction book. So there's obviously things that are, you know, that are going to continue to move forward anyway. Uh, but it does, that does make a bunch of sense that you can actually use the past to uh, relate to at least uh, future uh, subjects of free speech and so on. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I said, I'm excited. I, I, I went through and picked some chapters and read some things. I, 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 I'm a busy man too. So I haven't got a chance to read the whole thing yet. I'll yeah. be honest, but I will be reading the whole thing and I'll be picking sure. up my actual physical copy to add to my collection uh, of, of graphic novels. And I'm excited for it. So you can get it on Amazon um, as well as you guys have a website, right? Free, Free speech handbook.com. Look at that. How'd you get that? Huh? <laughs> uh, shockingly not taken. Um, uh, and it's, and it's great. And, and, you know, um, that's cool that you've already, uh, dove in. I, I will also say that the book, you know, each chapter in the book, um, the, the stories from the past move chronologically, but each chapter is designed, um, to be, you know, sort of something that you can, um, you know, take from, um, and, and then, you know, put the book aside for a while. So, uh, I hope it builds like a record album, but, um, but you can listen to each chapter like a track and I, I think have uh, a lot of fun and at least, uh, gain some knowledge about that particular, right. Mm -hmm. And I know this is where we're here to talk about this book, but is this something you guys both would be interested in doing again with some sort of different topic, um, but it's more uh, politically driven or, or, or more, uh, uh, you know, serious subject like this? Like, I know, you know, Ian, you've written books in the past and obviously, uh, Mike, you're a comic artist and you're an animation artist, but is this something that you would like even you two together or even separately would, would tackle again in the future? Well, we're, we're, we got a project in mind, um, uh, another nonfiction project in mind, and uh, I definitely uh, like to work together uh, with Mike again. So uh, that's what we're, uh, we're scheming to do right now. And I don't like, obviously, it's one of those things that, you know, in the in the industry, you guys both are in with these uh, uh, books and so on. A lot of times you can't say anything either. So no worries there at all. But I just, I know it, it's, one of the, <laughs> it's one of those things that when you get involved in it, you maybe at the beginning, you might have been like, oh, this would be cool to work with. But actually, when you do it, you're like, no, this is something I definitely want to do again. And it sounds like you guys do. So that's, that's exciting for all of us fans out there that are going to read it because, you know, you guys care a lot about it and are, are happy to do it. So that's 
obviously good for all of us out there. So, and you can follow you on uh, free speech book on Twitter and Instagram, I believe as well. Yep. Uh, you guys have also got book. your, so, uh, and you can get it on Amazon November 30th. I'm all excited. So pre-order, you can pre-order on Amazon now, right? You can pre-order on Amazon now or from your local indie bookstore. It's uh, yes. we're in New York and bookstore magic, uh, is the great indie bookstore in Brooklyn. Um, but wherever, uh, wherever books are sold and you know, Amazon's fine too. Yes, I'm pretty sure. You know, so we're, I'm located here in Bangor, Maine, up in uh, the northern New England uh, area, northeast area, in Briar Pratt, Patch in downtown Bangor. We'll most likely get it. He's usually on top of, of that as well. So yes, check out your local indie store as well. Uh, I, I usually use it because we're on the internet. <laughs> so you usually use the big the big bookstore. But uh, yeah, yeah, you can check out your indie bookstore as well. So anything else you guys want to add a little bit to the, at the end of this year? I mean, I just want to wrap things up or... Uh, well, I'll just say uh, it's been great to be on the show, but uh, I'll just say that, yeah, you know, I, I think that particularly, you know, for teens who want to, you know, speak their mind or change the world, uh, this is a great holiday gift. So uh, tell your tell your grandma uh, uh, that uh, you want a free speech book um, for the holidays. Uh, and yes, thanks. We're, uh, you can uh, contact us uh, at freespeechhandbook.com. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having us. And, um, you know, the only other thing I, I would add is is uh, Free Speech Handbook is is part of a, a line, a oh, kind yes. of a civics line. Uh, and uh, there are some really outstanding uh, other books in, in that series that are already out and more that are coming out. And uh, I think probably if you went to uh, firstsecondbooks.com, uh, maybe even worldcitizenbooks.com, I, I haven't checked that second out, uh, but, you know, you would you would check out the rest and, you know, I've read a couple of them and they're, they're pretty great. And, you know, uh, eye opening. Absolutely. And, um, and w while we're touting other books, um, Mike's uh, graphic novel series, Nico Bravo, uh, totally fiction, um, although uh, based on Greek myths that maybe once were true um, is incredible and uh, definitely another, another great gift idea. Oh, yeah, you are also an author of another book as well. So don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe for a different crowd though, but thanks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, awesome. So yeah, I'll we'll check it out at freespeechhandbook.com. I really appreciate you guys coming on. I loved it. I was very happy about reading it and, and talking to you guys. Very excited Thank to get you. on here. Adam wishes he was here, my co-host. Uh, he, he would have had some other questions too, probably. He's probably going to you know, text me after he hears this and go, why didn't you ask this? Or why didn't you talk about this? But maybe that's <laughs> Justin, another time. You, you get off easy. See, uh, he's got to submit a, uh, a written essay. About yes, the, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think that we I mean this is cool. We'll talk again in the future if you guys have another project that comes out, like you guys mentioned. I'd love to have you guys back on again. Uh, and, you know, and, and also Mike, if ever want to come on and talk about your other comic books and such, we're always here too. So uh, I really appreciate you guys coming on. And until next time, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you.